Hello. In this video, we are going to be solving logarithms. It will be covered in two different sections, each of them being a little bit different and with different methods to obtain answers. In the first section, we're going to be talking about solving logarithms where there is either only one single logarithm or there is a one logarithm on both sides of the equal sign and they will be of the same base. And we'll work on solving some logarithms later where they are using logarithm properties to get to the same point. So let's get started. What you see in front of you is some review notes as well as some steps in order to solve these first kinds of logarithm equations. Remember that when you have a logarithm, the base is always the bottom number the power or exponent is usually what it's equal to logarithms are equal to exponents and then the input or answer from that exponential form ends up in the answer part in which is usually in parentheses so in these first examples we're going to go to step one first convert it right to exponential form which we've practiced before and then we are going to solve if there's like bases for x and get that exponent. In front of us, we see five different examples of this first type, all of kind of similar sort of setup. So if we can comp start comparing these to each other and walk talking about these problems, we can look at number one first, log base two of 32 equals three X. So all you have to do first is convert it to exponential form, two to the three X equals 32. And then use what we already know about solving exponential equations. If we know 2 to the 3x equals 32, well, that means that we just need to get 2 as a common base. So now we have 2s in the bottom of both. 2 to the 5th is the same thing as 32. And then since the bases are the same, that means 3x and 5 are the same. And we have our answer, which is right here. The other problems in this section are very similar. Ones like two and three, two through uh, five actually are all kind of similar in that in all of them, they are basically doing the base raised to the power equal to the input. So three to the negative two, you can just put that right in your calculator and it'll tell you the answer is one ninth. So one ninth is equal to two X and we would just divide both sides by two to get X equal to one over 18. Number three, same really same process really where we are doing four to the power of two. And just that makes it 16 equal to the input of five X plus one. Solve that for X equals three. And then four and five, similar to number three, where you're doing eight to the power of two thirds equals X minus five. Put eight to the power of two thirds into your calculator, you get four and it's equal to X minus five, give you an answer of nine. And then five, as you can see, is very similar as well. The next method of solving these same sorts of log equations are examples where you're gonna have a logarithm on each side, but they already are equal to each other and they have the same base. So if you were taking log base 10 of something is equal to log base 10 of something different, well, that means whatever the inputs are, are also going to be equal. And remember to make use of your calculators whenever possible in this method. Let's walk through a few of these examples now too. So in these, we see in this first example, log base two of X is equal to log base two of 12. And you can see that they are both, they both have twos on them as bases. So if we remember that they have those twos in the bottom, we can just get rid of those logarithms. We can just cross them right out and get rid of them. So we know that X is equal to 12. Seven works the same way since they're both log base three and there's nothing else going on outside of these logarithms. That means we can just say that X minus five equals 13 and get that 18 is the answer. Eight and seven, basically the same idea, just a little bit extra algebra steps down here. 
And then finally nine, a little bit harder because now we have log base two on both sides. You can see that. So once you've gotten rid of the log base two parts, we have the X squared is going to be e minus six is going to be equal to two X plus two. Just solve that quadratic and you could do quadratic formula or factor as you see in front of you. The answers you would get would be four and negative two. And it's important that we'll talk about later on. Some of these answers might end up being extraneous. For instance, if you put negative two into X, you would have four minus six equals a negative logarithm. And you can't really do log base two of a negative number, given that two raised to any power would not get you to a negative number. So we technically would have to cross out negative two as a possible answer, and it is extraneous. Next, we will work through these six examples as classwork problems for you to try, and it would be beneficial to pause here, copy them down in your notes, leaving room to solve them for when we do it together in just a moment. And when, while we're going through each one, it's also a good idea to pause it and see if you can complete these problems on your own before seeing me walk, walk through them. We are now looking at the six problems that we were working on in our notes for classwork. Hopefully you've written down all six from earlier in the video and we're gonna go through each of them. So as we go through these, I'll pause for a second so you can try to work out one or two or up to six on your own. And then as you see me working on it, you'll know, are you doing it correctly? And this would be a great strategy for any student. So let's start by looking at X number one. So I can see that it's log base four of 256 is equal to X plus five. So now if I am going to try to solve this, I got to figure out, well, I'm going to do a four raised to the X plus five power equal to 256. So then I'll write that right underneath four to the X plus five equals 256. And I just need to solve that exponential equation just like I have solved before. So I would write 256 as four to the fourth power equals to what I had already on the left side, four to the X plus five. And then the two fours would be able to get kind of crossed out. And that would leave me with X plus five equaling four which means the answer here is X equals negative one. Now I'm gonna move on to number two. So try to work out number two, get an answer for X, see if it compares to what I'm about to go over. So first step is the same, two to the power of three X minus five equals 1024. Let's write that right underneath two to the power of three X minus five equals 1024. You might need to use a calculator, but it turns out that if you do ten, two to the 10th power, that is equal to 1024. And that would then be equal to two to the three X minus five. So now if you are trying to solve it from here, we just know now, we know now that two and two can get crossed out and we know that three X minus five is gonna be equal to 10. And if you use some solving equations, you would find that X would have to be equal to five once you've added five and divided by three. So those are both pretty similar to each other and Number three and four are a little different because we're going to have exponential parts that don't have X's in them. So they'll be a little easier than the first two. So let's look at three and four now. So we have number three. So now pause the video, take a second to think about number three, try to solve it for X. Now, if you did, you would have done three to the fifth power equals four X minus 17. Well, we, let's write that first. 
three to the fifth power equals four X minus 17. Now three to the fifth power, if you put that in your calculator equals 243. The right side didn't change at all. And then you can just solve equations there and you would get 260 equals to 4x. And that turns out that 65 is going to be equal to x. For number four is similar to number three. Take a second, try number four. So the first step would be the same, five to the fifth power equals three minus x. So let's write that, five to the fifth power equals three minus x. Five to the fifth power equals 3,125. And that equals three minus x. Be careful with the minus x, don't lose that along the way. So if you subtract three first, you would have 31, 22 equals negative x. So negative 31, 22 would have to equal x. Very important step there. You can't have 3 minus 31, 22 in that logarithm. So we want to make sure that we didn't remember that last step. And finally, we have our number 5 and 6. And this is where we're going to be utilizing our next step of this process. So we want to think about how we get rid of these two logarithms. And if we know on the left side here that both of these are base 13, well, that means we can just kind of cross out the two log base 13s and know that x squared, this part in here, is going to be equal to the 3x. So we have x squared minus 4 equals 3x. Well, we got a quadratic equation to solve. First step of solving any quadratic equation, no matter what the problem is, we'll be setting it equal to 0 first. And so we would just be subtracting that 3x from both sides. And we would get x squared minus 3x minus 4 equal to 0. And then I factored it to x minus 4, x plus 1 equals 0, and got my two answers of 4 and negative 1. And that brings us to our last problem, just like number 5. Try it out, see if you can figure out how to get the answer for x. So let's start with first step get rid of the logarithms they're both log base three and so we don't need them anymore we just will know that x minus five is equal to three x minus 25 and we can set them equal to each other and once we've gotten there, we just got our x's on one side. We got to put our numbers on the other side. And we usually there's an easiest way to do that. So if I, I would try to keep the x's positive if possible. So I would subtract x from both sides, getting me a 2x over here. And I would add 25 to both sides. So that would give me a 20 on the left side. So if 20 equals 2x, that means that 10 is going to be equal to x. And that finishes these classwork examples of solving logarithm equations when there's either the same logarithm on both sides or only one single logarithm that we can convert to exponential form.